if this deal is reentered by the Biden administration, do all those efforts go by the wayside? If a Biden administration goes back to the Iran deal, it means there will be, as I said earlier, no conditions. There may be no negotiations if they're going to go back fast. And if that happens, basically, many of the Arab countries who are now with us in this large coalition, probably coordinating already with Israel, I mean, this has never happened for decades, that will start to collapse. Why? Because the U.S. will start putting pressure on the Arab countries to actually, you know, uh, endorse the Iran deal. And we know that Iran will take action. I mean, it's not a secret against those Arab allies, should it be uh, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain as well, and then taking action in Yemen. So I, my recommendation would be different. We should negotiate first for a better deal, and then we could convince our partners, should they be the Arabs or Israel, to accept that new uh, Iran convention. What would be a better deal? What would you like to see uh, put in stone that's not there now? Well, look, the Trump administration, I mean, you could criticize it for a million things, but at least when it comes to Iran and the Middle East, they have applied pressure. They have contained Iran. They have put a lot of sanctions. So if I am a Biden administration, I will come and tell Iran, look, there are a lot of sanctions against you. You need to do those changes for us to remove these sanctions. You just don't go back and tell them, I'm going to remove all the sanctions, and now what do you think? And number one, Iran should absolutely cancel its long-range ballistic missiles. That's, that's crucial. Second, it's militias. I mean, their militias occupy Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, and are beyond. So there need to be negotiations about the missiles and the militias, and then we enter new negotiations about uh, the nuclear capabilities. Iran's aggression continues. They're the number one state sponsor of terrorism on the globe. We'll see what happens in the coming months. Dr. Walid Ferris. Walid, always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. As New York City faces a rise in violent crime, police are looking for multiple suspects in the beating of a young woman on the subway. Why it's being investigated as a hate crime. Next. I want to back up a little bit here. We all have. Um, I don't guess I can. I hey, lavish on my a on my time here. But um, I got something that I need to say to my viewers pertaining to what you just got through watching about Iran. You know the Americans pertaining to the CIA. They want to make things as simple as possible pertaining to putting things in a nutshell and saying, okay, looking at the big picture, Iran is the number one sponsored terrorist nation in the world. The thing about it is, that may be true in one perspective, but in another perspective, there is many little countries, as well as bigger countries, that would love to see America fold, collapse, and become nothing. I'll repeat that. We have multiple countries, regardless whether it's small countries or big countries, that would love to see America collapse. Why? Is the same reason why that they would love to see Jerusalem Israel, Bethlehem, become annihilated because of God the Father anointing Jerusalem thousands of years ago towards them basically being God's chosen people. The true Jews. The true Jews. Not the so-called Jews, but the true Jews. The ones that has the the Jewish bloodline in them. But it's not just the Jewish bloodline. It's also those who have been grafted in through the Jewish bloodline pertaining to the Gentiles. That's the flip side of the Orthodox Christian Christianity of the world that still America to this day still wants to reside as being the number one the number one supporter thereof so naturally 
whenever you look at all these anti-Christ type countries, and yes, this includes India, this includes anybody that is not preaching in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of what ideology or mythology that, that they're preaching in, regardless whether it be in a foreign land or right here in the United States, these are enemies at large that wants to see the good old USA become just as neutral and just as nonchalant as Jerusalem. So whenever they make a statement such as they make in regards to Iran being the number one sponsorship of terrorism, they're only saying that because it looks good in a nutshell type environment as far as putting them all in one category. I'm sure, I ain't completely sure, but I'm sure that there has to be some people in Iran that has their doubts about believing in the in the teachings of the Quran and Allah, and they have their doubts about their leadership towards what their leaders is actually up to. I'm sure that there's people in their country that has just as much love, kindness, and forgiveness through the Holy Spirit as they do over here in America. I don't know how many, but I'm sure it is. Because God's people is everywhere. God's true anointing is everywhere. Looking at the year 2021 and going into the O'Biden administration, Joe Biden's administration, God has not showed me in regards towards whether or not this thing is going to go backwards or going to go forwards pertaining to the Abraham agreement. But I do know this. According to the scriptures, where it talks about in the first four chapters of Revelations, for God hates those who declares themselves as being Jews and are not, and God hates those who worship Balaam and Balak. Balaam and Balak come from the original Iranian empire to the uh, pertaining to the Persian empire that began give or take just about the time that Abraham was anointed we know this because Daniel wrote these things out pertaining to the hand that wrote on the wall that was done supernaturally it wasn't done by man and if you analyze what it talks about pertaining to the book of Daniel that existed, <clears throat> give or take about 775 years B.C., before Christ, you'll understand that it is prophesied, it is prophesied that they will have a strong influence in in time biblical Bible prophecy towards being part of the bad guys. Where America messed up at. Now once more, this is my opinion, and we have a right to hold our opinion. Where America messed up is that they basically gave OPEC over to the Saudi Arabian people and the Saudi Arabian people have become so influential that the Saudi Arabia people has helped to finance secret organizations and terrorist compound camps all over the world. They just do it in a discreet way. Now, they'll tell America, we're your ally. But in reality... In reality, 
The Saudis is not our ally. They only put up with us because we are as powerful as what we are. But if the truth be known, they would like to see not only Jerusalem fall, Israel, Bethlehem, where Christ come from, pertaining to the Jews, but they would love to see America fall too as well. Now to get them to, con to open up and to announce that would probably be slim to none. It'd probably be almost like pulling hen's teeth, as my grandpa used to say, because they're not going to chop off their own noses to despite their faces. They know the relationship that they have had with the Americans going all the way back to senior Bush's father back in the 1920s of the oil production that was being drilled out of the ground. What they don't realize and what the Iranians don't realize and the people in Afghan and Pakistan and all them other countries over there don't realize that they are still engineering their thoughts and their ideals in a primitive type way. And whenever I say primitive, I'm not, not necessarily talking about riding around on camels. But what I'm talking about is that how that they have brought tyranny into their own people towards basically using their people as slaves, slavery, and they're still based upon the engineer, the ingenuity faculties of the crude oil. You see, they had such of a powerful influence on the Americans over here. And whenever I say the Americans, I'm talking about the big people. I'm talking about the conglomerates. That they have put us in behind the eight ball in regard towards how other countries has merged in a technological society way that would be three to one in comparison to us. Even North Korea and their technology is advanced more than we are. China is advanced techn technologically speaking more than we are. Why is this? Because we hung on to those old ideals. We hung on to those old methods. What's the old saying? Out of sight, out of mind, out of mind, out of sight. You know, if it don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The thing about it is it's been broke. It's been broke now for a long, long period of time because of bad leadership coming from the American politicians. And because of it, it has jeopardized us in competition to where we ought to be towards being the number one country of the world. There was a time whenever America was number one in every aspect you could think of. We're not no more. You know, they got plane, they got um, rails over in France and England that go something like 200 and something or 300 and something, or I don't know, maybe it's 400 and something miles an hour that will exceed our ingenuity aspect probably five to one. How come we don't have rail that'll do that fast towards getting from, let's say, Chicago to L.A. in less than two hours on a rail or, or maybe four hours on a rail? I'm going to tell you why. Because we have been enslaved by old ideals and old methods going all the way back to what didn't happen that should have happened during Ronald Reagan and Bush's administration. Because of the whoremongers. And because of the warmongers. The warmongering and the whoremongering. That is what has brought America to its knees right now. Because if they wasn't running whores or whores running men pertaining to open sexuality in regards to free sex, they're steadily thinking about shooting and killing. 
And if they're not building guns or building bullets for the guns, they're building missiles to cause destruction and pain and agony. And if we're not building them for us to use, we're selling them to other people so that they'll use them, which is unproductive, contrary to the word peace. If you was truly believing in the essence of peace, like the Bible talks about, would we be building aircraft carriers? Would we be building bombs? Would we be continually selling and buying all these bullets and all these guns over here in America? It is absolutely asinizing in thinking that it's acceptable to do this and still be in favor in the eyes of the Heavenly Father pertaining to it being one of God's commandments, thou shalt not kill. That's the part that I can't resignate with the general public here in the United States. And just like a while ago, I, Mr. Barnes, Pat Barnes, called me up because of me sending him some material. And he questioned me. He goes, Dennis, you know what you need? I go, no, what do I need? He goes, you need a good woman. I go, okay. I appreciate your opinion. But the fact of the matter is that's not what I really need. What I need is a congregation. What I need is a support team. And I went to mentioning off this preacher's name and that preacher's name, well-known international evangelist, until I got to Joe Osteen, he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, you don't, need to, you don't need to be like him. I said, well, the bottom line is this. Whenever I first started getting out into the eyes of the general public in 1988 and 89, I go, I did not even have a clue about the events that I was going to be entangled up into pertaining to the Oklahoma events because the Oklahoma events hadn't yet taken place. The Oklahoma events didn't take place until 1999, 1995. I was already in the ministry in 1988 going from various places. And I described to him about all this different stuff. And I said, you know, it's not just about what went on in my life in Oklahoma. And I guess the reason why that he's kicking up about this, he's rearing up, is because once I get infixiated on the Oklahoma bombing, or once something happens to the point that a lot of heat or more concentration falls upon to that particular event that happened in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, he gets antsy. He gets sweaty palms. He gets nervous. He tries to talk me down. Dennis, you need to get all that off your mind. If I've heard him say that once, I've heard him say that at least a hundred different times. Dennis, all that is in the past, and you're going to have to quit thinking about that stuff. Really? I'm going to have to quit thinking about my adversary? The one that is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he's not, and if he's out to kill, steal, and destroy me, and if he's out to kill, steal, and destroy God's chosen people, is that not a strong enough example towards what went on in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, pertaining to the evil that done what they done? You see, anytime anybody exhausts the motive of wanting to bring harm and hurt either to property or to people. It is contrary to the word of God because Jesus' teachings was simple. Be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. The individual that just got through activating a bomb in downtown Nashville, I'm pretty sure in his mind's eye, whoever it was, which I may be overstating this fact, but I'm pretty sure that he probably thought to some degree he was right in his own little messed up persona 
or his world that what he was doing was not a horrible, horrible, bad thing. Regardless whether the individual take, taking his own life or, or vice versa. Because for somebody to do something like that has to have an element in their mind that has either been taken over or, or they're not within their right mind pertaining to some sort of a problem regarding reality versus insanity. Same way with anybody that was going to blow up the Oklahoma building. That's just my opinion. Once more, Mr. Pat Burns explained to me about me being cautious about my background and I don't think that he he has never either accepted or understood the sacrifices that the ministry has made way before I ever got to meet and be introduced to the people in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 2009. You know, I had no idea that I was going to meet up with them people just like I had no idea that I was going to meet up with the people in Land Between the Lakes just like I had no idea that my own people right here in Weekly County was going to try to try to paint a picture of me towards me being a monster or the Antichrist or the devil himself by charging me with falsifying files that begins right here in Weekly County in Martin, Tennessee, the Martin PD. But they did. They did. So those roads has already done been crossed. And like I told Mr. Byrne, I said, I realize I can't live in the past and I wouldn't want to live in the past to begin with pertaining to all the pain, agony, and the hurt that I've had to go through just like my wife walking out of my life in 2005 simply because I stood up for the ministry. Losing about a half a million dollars, a five-acre mini farm, and that's whenever the charges come into my life in Martin, Tennessee, and I basically had to move to Davidson County Nashville, Tennessee, to get away from the heat. But um, I told him, I said, I can use my past as a testimony to not only verify the things that the founder of the ministry has went through, but it can help direct the future alignment towards where I need to go. And what I need to do. Like I told him. No I don't need a good woman. What I need. Is people. To ante up. What I need. Is for all these people. That has rejected this message. In the past 30 plus years. To come clean. Pertaining to interpreting the Bible. The same way that I have interpreted the Bible. Because I know that the Bible. Speaks for itself pertaining to end-time biblical Bible prophecy. And, and rather than me get all this resistance from various individuals, regardless whether they be in here in Tennessee or Georgia or Oklahoma or Kentucky or Washington, D.C. or wherever, I should be getting supporters. A group of people that comes together that wants to rid the very axes of evil. The same as I want to see the axes of evil ridden. You know, whenever you talk about Satan, you talk about the Antichrist, you talk about Lucifer, you're just not talking about one particular entity. You're talking about the whole thing pertaining to rapes, murders, robberies, um, disobedience to parents, um, killing unborn children, being against that, and, and then I could go on and on pertaining to the big scope that comes with trying to live a righteous, holy life, and at the same time being against, hating, hating those who worship under Balak and Balaam. 
If my Lord and my Savior, if the creator of this universe hates those who follow under the old Babylonian Persian primitive ways, do you think that I'm going to contradict my own Heavenly Father's feelings and my own Heavenly Father's attributes that he has main, main, that he has ma made known unto humanity pertaining to him doc the Bible being documented in the way that it is that he hates fornicators, liars, murderers, he hates queers, um, he hates um, uh, those uh, that don't have courage, pertaining to them being cowards. He hates all these things, okay? He hates the things that causes the corruption in man. He still loves man. He still loves the gay guy. He just don't love what the gay guy's doing. He still loves the lesbian. He just don't know. He just don't love what the lesbian's doing. He loves the murder. He just don't love what the murderer has done that now has classified the murderer as being a murderer. He loves the thief, but he don't love what the thief has done to classify the thief as the thief being a thief. You got to look at it realistically that God still loves humanity because we are his creation. He created us. And he created us to be an obedient, subservient unto him. Just like I explained to Mr. Burns down in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, one of the ones that was involved in them planting a bomb in the back end of my truck in a di indirect way. I explained to Mr. Burns, I said, have you ever thought about why in the world that people in the Bible would be willing to walk in sand that was in temperatures of 145 to 160 degrees during the day that was walking without any sandals or any type of shoes that walked in and out of one valley into another until they went from village to village to village until their feet literally bled. Literally bled. Why would an individual be willing to do that just to spread the good news of the gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, well, I, I, really, I really hadn't given a whole lot of thought, I don't guess. I go, because once you've ever been in the presence of God, and you have been anointed by him. It is not something that you pick up today and let go tomorrow. It is not something pertaining to a fad or here today and gone tomorrow. It is, it is a life-changing experience. Those who have ever truly been born again of accepting the Holy Spirit into their lives, it is a life-changing event. And I would put the realness of being saved in the same category as a life-death situation of an individual that comes close to death, either in an accident, a heart attack, a stroke, or coronavirus, or, or somebody that just got involved in whatever, and they die, and they come back to life. Once this ever occurs in that individual's life, I promise you, that person, if they have any consciousness about them at all, they will have a different opinion about not only themselves, but they will have a different opinion about life in general because they will realize that they come within milliseconds or millihairs of walking up into eternity. And most of them that has come close to death like that, that knows 
whether or not their heart was right with God before that occurred, will tell you if I would have went ahead and died. I truly believe that I would have split hell wide open, and I never would have been able to have fulfilled my purpose. You see, that's where the intervention takes place, just like whenever Christ intervened with Lazarus. Lazarus had done already died in the Bible, okay? But because of the mercy and the love coming from his people and the Lord Jesus Christ, God allotted or allowed for Lazarus to have, they claim, give or take around another 20 years after that he had already done started stinking in the tomb after being dead for three days and three nights. God's will is not our will. And if it's written in the books, pertaining to the book that God has written, for something to occur or something to happen. It will, in fact, happen. It may take a little longer for it to happen, and it may have to change course a time or two before it actually does happen. As I have said before, and I'll say again, and I'll continue to say, God is not going to make nobody bow down to him and serve him through the teachings and the anointing and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what he will do is make you regret that you didn't serve him and that you didn't give your heart and your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of people they think that they're they think that they're in good with God. And they judge their occurrences off of the pleasures of society of today. I'm pretty sure Mr. Pat Burns, he's probably, uh, with him being uh, in the military and serving in the military and serving in Oklahoma uh, uh, precinct pertaining to him being a U.S. Marshal, I'm pretty sure he's probably drawn a very handsome retirement check, give or take around thirty-five to $4,000. I don't know what his wife does. We ain't never discussed his family. And it wouldn't be right for me to uh, discuss her openly on my Facebook or, or YouTube channel pertaining to his wife. But I can discuss him. And I'm sure he has based all his acquaintances towards the blessings of God simply around the fact that he's got a healthy checking account. He's got a healthy savings account. He lives in a nice home somewhere over in the Edmond uh, area, the way that I understand it, uh, Edmond, Oklahoma. And he's got grandchildren, and he's living the good life and trying to teach them according to the way that he believes that they should be taught. I'm sure that in his mind's eye, he truly believes that he is in the blessings and the hollow hand of God. He's a Catholic. I ain't going to judge him. I'm not going to tell the man that he's not because I don't know. Even if I was to live around him, breathe around him, pray around him, work around him, I still would not know Mr. Burns's true heart. There's only one person that knows Mr. Burns's true heart, and that's God. Just like there's only one person that knows my true heart, which is God. The only thing that I can do, just like I told Mr. Burns, is to steadily grow, do like I'm doing, towards putting out my messages on my platform, my YouTube platform, and hopefully one day somebody out there will come and want to hear what I got to teach and what I got to say, and preferably one day there will be a movement from the windmill ministries and one day there will be a congregation or a support team that will grow and intensify maybe even as much or even larger than Joe Osteen. Or, like I explained to him, it may be that my message may be similar or like 
some of the other prophets in the Bible. One of them, I think, stripped off his clothes for three years and never put his clothes back on preaching a message. And there's been other messengers or prophets of God that has preached a message that never did achieve any true converts. Now, just because they didn't achieve any true converts in the eyes of man does not mean that they still did not do what they were supposed to have done in the eyes of God. Because if God truly anointed those people to bring forth that message, it doesn't matter if they got a million supporters or no supporters. The authenticity comes from the anointing coming from God. And God will, in fact, bless that person for being faithful, just as the teachings of Christ says, he who shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. In other words, you have to endure with that same powerful message that God gave you during the time that he gave it to you, all the way to the very last breath. And if you don't do that, then odds are it probably wasn't from God. But one of the main signs, and I explained this to Mr. Burns, that I have been anointed by God since 1983 at the age of 27, and I have dedicated my life over to God through the teachings of Christ over half of my life. And one of the main signs that you'll see from either a, a, a saved preacher, teacher, instructor, evangelist, um, anybody that is walking out with a very, very powerful message coming from God, one of the true signs that you will follow or, or notice in that person is that they will remain steadfast in the way that he or she believes, even up until their very last breath. That's how you can tell the authenticity of the message. It don't have nothing to do with the messenger. The messenger can get up on top of the house and preach until he's black and blue in the face. And just because the messenger has not obtained a following or a support team, does not, does not mean that the messenger was not anointed by God because there's been many a people throughout the Bible that preached various messages in various cultures that, as far as we know, there never was obtained any type of following or support team. So don't think that just because a person don't have big pillars of gold and a fancy building to preach out of, like Joe Olstein or, or, or a uh, Coliseum, don't think that just because you can't put yourself in that category that you're still not anointed by God of preaching your message that God has given to you to preach. Your testimony is your testimony. Nobody can take your testimony from you. Now, they'll try to take it from you. Just like the Bible teaches, see thou that no man take thy crown. See thou that no man take thy testimony. You maintain your testimony. You continue to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ and how that he has delivered you from this and delivered you from that and helped you through this and helped you through that. That's the glory of God. You're testifying in his behalf towards glorifying your holy, righteous, living God. Don't never let nobody take that from you or steal that from you. Just as the Bible teaches that no man can pluck you from the Father's hand. And they can't. As long as you stay steadfast and as long as you fight the good fight, just as Paul fought the good fight. It is a battle. It is a struggle. It maintains some sort of energy in knowing 
that you've got enemies out there that are out to kill, steal, and destroy. So please, whenever they tell you on TV or on radio that Iran is the number one terrorist sponsor country in the world, do not be deceived in those words. Maybe, hypothetically speaking, they may be. But technically speaking, we have terrorist groups and people all over the planet, including right here in the United States, that would love to see America fall. They would love to see the Christian society die out and fall. That's the reason why that I say Christ is recommending or ordering for us to integrate pertaining to letting the wheat grow with the tares until time of harvest. A lot of people around here locally, they wanted to root up the wheat. They wanted to stop the witness from witnessing. They wanted to shut his mouth. They didn't want him to become effective with the windmill ministries. So they was trying to drag him down. They were trying to hurt him. They were trying to destroy him. Even, even to this day, if they was to catch me at the right place at the right time, God only knows what that they would try to do if my Heavenly Father didn't intervene towards stopping them from doing what they was going to do. Even though I've never hurt them, I've never touched them, I've never beat them on a car deal, I never got fresh with their wives or their girlfriends or, 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 or any of their daughters. They have such of a hate that is built up inside of them against us, and I say us, that they would be willing to sacrifice their very eye teeth just to be able to take or steal our reward or steal our soul. That's where the true Christian society has to be strong, long. Even if people think that you're wrong, you have to maintain your vision. You have to maintain your testimony. I'm not going to tell Mr. Pat Burns that he's never been saved or that he don't have a relationship with God. And hopefully he has the decency towards telling me the same or not telling me the same. Because whenever you tell somebody that, you're basically judging them. Now, if I seen the lifestyle that Mr. Burns was living towards me being around him 24-7, and I know that the things that he was involved in did not line up with scriptures, then the scriptures would judge Mr. Barnes, and then and only then would give me the right to come to Mr. Barnes and say, you know what, Mr. Barnes, according to the Bible, you're not supposed to be living in adultery. According to the Bible, you're not supposed to be convincing your wife to have an abortion of killing an unborn child. You know, there's ways that you can approach people and do so in a loving, kind, unjudgmental way. But still, you get your message out to the people, whoever that you're trying to get your message out to, that, hey, according to the Bible, or according to God, these are the words that he has spoken that we are to let govern in our own personal lives. And if we're not willing to do that ourselves, the Bible says that we have no right in trying to convince somebody else to get the moat out of their eye if we still have the being in ours. I just wanted to bring these things out to you in regards to the lie of Iran being the number one sponsors of terrorism throughout the world. There's no doubt they're humongous. There's no doubt 
they carry a large load. But so do some of those other little bitty tiny countries. There's about 192 of them uh, that can be just as poisonous in one perspective as they, uh, as they are in another. You keep in mind, an adversary is an adversary. And it doesn't matter what color his eyes are. It doesn't matter whether or not it's male or female. doesn't matter creed. doesn't matter whether or not they're from one continent or the other. An adversary is an adversary. And an adversary is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And is the author of confusion, according to, once more, the Holy Bible. So never, never let us walk away from the truth because the truth will in fact set us free. Thanks again for listening. Good luck to all of us as we venture off into another new year in in uh, 2021. Um, hopefully these uh, these signs Hopefully these uh, grieving despairs, hopefully these sorrows that we have now started to understand will be effective in turning men and women's hearts around. Let's listen to the rest of this pertaining to the chief there in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, the reason why that I'm once more uh, interested is, number one, it's in my home state, and number two, uh, because of the things that I have been exposed to since 2005, since people wanted to attack me for falsifying files and trying to put me on the burner of being a homegrown terrorist. I have drawn a lot, a lot of interest in what motivates a terrorist towards a terrorist ever wanting to become a terrorist to begin with. And it once more, it fits under the pretense of a mean, cruel, cold-hearted human being that wants to do this. And you can be a terrorist, okay? And not touch explosions. As far as I'm concerned, what went on out here at 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee? We was tormented. David and I was. We was terrorized. David, on a night-to-night -night occasion, I would have to call him and say, yep, they're on a rampage again out here, David. And David would stop in Kenton, and he would load up his guns, thinking that they was going to ambush him down through the bottoms. And David had to put up with that type of environment. And David's nerves had to live with that on a night-to-night, day-to-day basis for about three years before David just couldn't take it no more. He was overwhelmed by all the uncertainty that was going on out here towards being attacked, being hunted, being demonized, being dehumanized by various individuals that was coming out here and, and wanting, to, wanting to get a rise out of us. Wanting to stir up trouble. Wanting to destroy the purpose of our witness or our testimony by making us look like we was the bad guys. Trying to make us look like we was the monsters. Even Tommy Moore in Dresden, Tennessee said, Dennis, they're thinking that you're the dark horse instead of the light horse. And I asked him at the time, I said, what do you think? Well, he couldn't give me an answer then until he got the coronavirus. After he got the coronavirus, about a week or so ago, he said, Dennis, you serve the same God that I serve. If you don't mind, keep me in your prayers. You see, there's never an atheist in a foxhole. Once you're in that foxhole, and you know that you can die at any given moment, and there's bullets and bombs blowing up all around you. You're going to hang on to life, even if it's afterlife. Because you don't know if your life, pertaining to this life, is going to be over with by having bullets and bombs coming at you 24-7.
So please, let's listen to the rest of this engaged in the event that happened on Christmas Day that, as far as I'm concerned, does fit under the category of a rural or a homegrown terrorist. Uh, the same thing that occurred out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in the year 1995. That was a stem off towards what happened or what went on in Mount Karma, Waco, Texas in 1993. We're at the home of this individual searching his home. And one of the things that they were uh, taking was DNA. They need DNA uh, from him because he's dead. Obviously, uh, they can't get anything from him. So now they're looking for family members and DNA from inside his home that they can compare to the human tissue uh, and the, some of the body parts, perhaps, that they have found here at the scene. As to motive, that is still very much unclear. Authorities working through that, trying to figure out. There isn't anything at this point that stands out to them, clearly stands out to them, to indicate a motive. They are looking at whether the target was the AT&T building. That is something uh, that they are looking at. We are now being told there's going to be a press conference here uh, at about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock local time here. Uh, so that is going to happen, and hopefully we will learn more there. But the police are expected to update us around that time here today. Mm. So, Shimon, okay, so um, authorities saying Anthony Quinn, Warner, person of interest, 63 years old. But remember, there was also um, the, a female voice on that recording, and one would uh, think they're trying to figure out who that person is to all this while we heard from some of the police officers today who were the first responders who helped save lives. Um, what can you add to all of that? Yeah, so it's for the first time. There were six officers at the police department and the FBI and the ATF, all have been crediting uh, with heroic work in evacuating this area after they got on scene. And for the first time, we're getting details about what they saw about the RV which are extremely fascinating because what they say is when they get here and they are listening to this recording, and as you said, it is a female voice, but it may have been a recorded digitized uh, voice which was going over the loudspeaker on this RV telling people to evacuate. But what one of the officers describes is that there were shades covering every window of this RV. The officer also says there was a surveillance camera. They could see a camera uh, above the rear view mirror, making them feel like whoever was inside could see what they were doing. But they also described what it was like trying to evacuate people, get people to safety moments before the explosion. And here's what they said. No. You know, for me, it felt like I only took three steps, and then the music stopped, and as I'm walking back toward Toppy now, I just see orange, and then I hear a loud boom, and uh, as I'm stumbling, because uh, it, it rocked me that hard, I started stumbling, I just tell myself to stay on your feet, stay alive. And of course, those efforts being all heralded here by the mayor and city officials as the heroic work by these officers, which undoubtedly saved many lives when you look at the amount of destruction, the damage that this explosion caused here. Mm -hmm. All right, Shimon Perkovitz, thank you so much in Nashville. We'll check back with you. All right, meantime, millions of Americans are set to lose crucial benefits as we enter the new year. President Trump's delay in signing a $900 billion relief package passed by U.S. Congress last Monday, leaving many working families on the brink of financial crisis. And Before I end this particular segment here, Mr. Burns said, Dennis, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that the FBI and Homeland Security and the big boys are not concerned about you. And the reason why that I said that is because I left him a voice message telling him that I'm so glad that I do not have an RV that looks similar to this person's RV around all these superstitious people around here that has spread so much propaganda about me. I told him on his voicemail 
that if I did, I just about guarantee you somebody would have done already knocked on my door towards wanting to analyze my equipment and possibly come out here and ramsack my place from head to toe looking for stuff. Once more, Mr. Barnes, the one that planted a bomb in the back end of my truck in 2009, or the one that was a part of the team indirectly that had a part of that that occurred in my life out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, said, Dennis, I guarantee you, they don't, they're, they're, they're not concerned about you. They know who I am. They know that, that you're okay. I said, okay, Mr. Burns, I would be willing to bet you $500. I was going to say 1000 but I didn't know how much money that he had to lose. But I said, I bet you $500 I could go down here at the post office and I could get a visa. I could get a passport to leave this country within the next 30 days. Going to be gone for two weeks going to the Holy Land. And as soon as I got down to Memphis in an international airport, even if I was with a church group, the U.S. Marshals would stop me and the odds of me going any further than the welcoming center in Memphis International Airport would probably be slim to none at this particular juncture. Mr. Burns spoke up and said, well, that's different, Dennis. I go, why is that any different than my true testimony of how that people has scarred me and marred me and brought all kinds of false accusations into my life pertaining to trying to dress me up as me being a monster or a homegrown terrorist? I go, once more, I am so glad that I, I go, I got three RVs sitting out here. One of them ain't no good. One of them my brother was living in at the time, that just a piece of junk. I go, but I got two other RVs out here, recreation vehicles, that you drag in behind a truck, you pull. I go, but I'm so glad that I don't have one that is self-contained like the one that they have showed on TV, because if I did have that, I truly believe that I would have been called on the carpet by the local authorities, the TBI right here in Weekly County, towards somebody, especially if, the, if, if everybody and their brother knew that I had the RV and suddenly the day before the explosion, the RV just disappeared. With various people that thinks that they know my true background, I guarantee you, as superstitious as these people are, somebody would have been making a telephone call. Well, yeah, I recognize that RV. That, that guy down there, Denny Shaxon, had one just like it up until about 24 hours ago, and it just up and disappeared, identical to it. I was trying to elaborate to Mr. Burns, I am glad that I didn't have an RV like that, because if I did, I would be substant to being harassed by the federal authorities. Once more, once I use the analogy towards getting a visa and going to an international airport, towards wanting to go visit the Holy Land, he backed up real quick. And no, I ain't betting you no bet like that. Uh-huh. So what are you doing trying to tell me that all these things that has occurred in my life is not still affecting my life? It will affect my life to the day that I die, pertaining to what has happened in Martin, Tennessee, in Weekly County, what has happened in Trigg County, what has happened in Land Between the Lakes, pertaining to, I think it's Livingston County, and up towards uh, Paducah, Kentucky, and the things that has occurred in my life out in downtown Atlanta, and the things that has occurred in my life out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. How come Mr. Burns thinks that these things are not going to affect my life? Whenever I drove all the way from here to Aspen, Colorado, that I had a guaranteed job of working at a body technician, and once I got out there, 
it cost the people that I was trying to get a job by a thousand dollars for them to write me out a check and say, you just need to go on about your business. We'll give you a thousand dollars. We'd rather give you a thousand dollars, Mr. Jackson, and have you walk off from our facility with a smile than for you to come to work for us. So you can't tell me that the things that the government, regardless whether it's local government, state government, or federal government, pertaining to the churches and the politicians of how that they have tainted and tried to destroy the founder of the Windmill Ministries, even though the founder of the Windmill Ministries has preached a message out of the King James Version Bible, and even though the founder of the Windmill Ministries has always preached a message of grace, hope, love, prosperity, and peace. Thanks again for listening. There's the devastation once more in Nashville, Tennessee. We need to uplift our dearest and our best men and women in uniform pertaining to our first responders that need to be looked upon as being nothing more than heroes pertaining to what these six individuals done towards cleaning out and clearing out various people that could have had their lives taken over a terrorist event that happened at 6.30 Christmas Day 2020 in the state of Tennessee. Thanks again. Good luck to all of us and shalom. What a heck of a Christmas gift.